But six is it doesn't matter what comes your way. You've got that support system around you. You've got your tribe and it's yep. going to be okay. But if you stress about things before they've even happened, then you're losing that opportunity to really enjoy the life that you're in right now. Give me a chance. Yeah, baby, try, try, try just one more night. Then make up your mind, mind, mind. Hi, welcome to the Christian and Tiffany channel. I'm Christian. And I'm Tiffany. And today we're talking about the Enneagram six. Six. Seven, six, six, six. <laughs> the littlest slash skeptic. So um, why don't you dive in and tell us a little bit about the childhood beliefs? Yeah, well, so today we're going to tell you um, five things that you should know about the Enneagram Six. Yep. Um, their childhood beliefs, some of the stereotypes that sometimes are on the negative side, um, yeah. but some stereotypes, and then strengths, weaknesses, and how to relate to any sixes that might be in your life. So we're going to start with the childhood belief, right? So the childhood belief of a six is that they aren't safe and that they can't trust themselves. They really don't have this understanding or trust that they can really make good decisions for some reason. Um, and then they have a difficult difficulty trusting other people as well. So for an Enneagram six, um, they're, they're known as the skeptics because a lot of times they have this negative mentality of something's going to go wrong. They um, can be a little bit pessimistic and think if something can go wrong, something will go wrong. I'm not safe. The world around me isn't safe. I'm not even safe for myself. I need somebody to guide me so I don't make mistakes even with myself, oh, wow. you know? Um, and they also have this running dialogue of what if going on in their mind all the time. What if this happens? What if this would happen? Um, they, <laughs> they have, they walk into a room and they know where all the exits are. They get on an airplane and they strategize exactly what they would do in the case of an emergency. Like they, they think about all the possible problems that might happen and they always plan a way of escape. And so for a, a six, for a six, for a loyal skeptic, as a child, typically something in their environment just felt unstable to them. And again, that's just their perspective. Maybe they had great parents that were there all the time, but maybe they were busy. And so for the six, they felt like because of that, that they just didn't feel like they were they were safe because there wasn't an adult present often enough. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that you had a traumatic childhood. And I will say this about sixes too. I don't remember where I picked up this statistic, so don't quote me on this, but I think the that six is the largest percentage of Enneagram numbers. Wow. Like, 40 to 50 percent of people are sixes they're just a very um they just make up the majority of the world um i think it's like eights and i'll have to go back and look at this but um some of the less common numbers um are like eights i think and fours and ones or something i don't know again don't quote me i should research this before i open my mouth about it <laughs> um but anyways but sixes are a lot more common and, um, and they have an underlying anxiety is also one of the things about sixes is that um, they're, they worry because they feel like the world around them is unsafe and circumstances and situations are unsafe. They have a lot of anxiety. So if you're like, I, am, I have anxiety issues, I'm on anxiety meds, it could be that you're a six. The other thing that's unique about sixes is that there's actually two types of sixes. So they have their wings and all those other things, but there's two types of sixes. Um, there's the phobic six, which is a six who in an attempt to feel secure, they look to authority figures for safety. So they will find an authority figure that they trust and they'll say, I need you to help me make this decision. I can't do this. You need to come with me to buy a car. You need to come with me to buy a house. They really rely heavily on authority figures to help guide them because they don't trust themselves, but they do trust these authority figures. And then there's counterphobic sixes and their tendency is to distrust authority figures. So the world is unsafe, situations are unsafe and authority figures very likely are unsafe too. And so they will either um, skeptically watch authority figures, try to figure them out and analyze them and are very distrusting or they'll just outright challenge authority as a way of keeping themselves safe. They push authority back. And so those are the two types two types of sixes. Um, I think it's kind of interesting to think about sixes from a very instinctual perspective of safety in numbers. They're loyal and they're some of the most incredibly um, fun and social people in the Enneagram because being a part of a group 
is so important to their their essential survival really that they 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 are the ones that pull together groups in oh. unities they keep people together they're the ones that are always pulling in come over for dinner come over to my house let's all get together because for them they're safety in numbers um, so they kind of have almost like this herd mentality you know you think about beautiful zebras out you know in the plains they, they realize that they have a better chance of survival and security and safety if they're surrounded by like-minded people. And so they will surround themselves with people that won't challenge them or make them uncomfortable, but that are like-minded. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also have a flight or fight instinct. So that's where your phobic and counterphobic come in. Um, they're either going to, um, when they feel unsafe or feel fearful, they're gonna run away from it. They're gonna try and flee, you know, they're going to stay away from uncomfortable situations or they're going to go um, fight them. They're going to challenge authority. They're going to face those situations and be really intentional. But either way, they're going to guard their group and they're going to be really, um, a lot of times I've heard of sixes referred to as loyal guardians because they will guard and protect their people. They're mm, extremely mm. loyal. So that's a lot. That's more than just their childhood <laughs> belief, but that kind of gives you an idea of what sixes are. They're incredible, incredible people that really help bring so much unity to the world. So they're amazing. Absolutely. Okay, do you wanna talk about some stereotypes? Yeah, number two, stereotypes. So uh, Tiffany hit on a lot of the stereotypes. They're phobic, <laughs> pessimistic, conspiracy theorists. Mm -hmm. um, they can be fearful, or like you said, they mm -hmm. can be survivalists and, and really just kind of skeptical. If they don't trust you, there's kind of that barrier to reach them. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, if if they don't trust you, they're going to be that skeptic, obviously. If mm -hmm. they don't trust, they're going to be a skeptic, what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. But, um, you know, it takes a little bit to build that. And once they do build that, then they really, that ties Friends into their life. strengths. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they move towards that healthy nine. They're loyal. Mm -hmm. um, they're trustworthy. Mm -hmm. They're thoughtful. They're that, uh, like Tiffany said, you know, they're going to yeah. protect the tribe. Mm -hmm. I think that's the common word right now is tribe. tribe. Get your tribe. Get your tribe. Um, they it's can be funny. Um, often making fun of themselves, the different anxieties oh my goodness, that they have. I forgot have. about that. Yeah. Sixes are incredibly funny. They're like witty, the life of the party. Really, I mean, you think about, we'll get into sevens um, next, but you know, they can tend to be the life of the party, but sixes, they kind of tend to make a joke of themselves a lot of times in their anxiety. Um, but they're very witty and they're very funny and just fun to be around, especially those sixes with those wing sevens. Um, I kind of cut you off where you finish with the yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Doing great. Um, okay, so I wanted to say, what was I going to say about, oh, um, another stereotype that I wanted to say was devil's advocate. A lot of people consider the six as a devil's advocate because mm. they're so good. This is one of their strengths is they're so good at being able to look at a, at a scenario or a situation and they see every single possible scenario. Mm. They're like, this could happen. This could happen. This could happen. So they're really good strategists and they're really good um really at brainstorming and discussing and coming up with ideas because this this could this could and they play that devil's advocate advocate worst case scenario well what if this happened what if this happened well i will you know well what about this and they they really kind of can come from like multiple different angles to see a situation and then to help kind of strategize the best avenue through that Oh, wow. So, so they'd be trouble great, great troubleshooters in business for sure. Yeah. To come up with strategy and mm -hmm. different operations yeah. and avenues. Um, what are some other strengths? Uh, well, we talked about determined, perseverant. Mm -hmm. um, They're overcomers for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because it, it, they have so much anxiety and so much fear, because really ultimately six's greatest issue is fear. They're just this underlying, underlying fear. Kind of scared um, to make a decision. Fives sixes and sevens are all in that triad where they're motivated by fear and mm. trying to avoid things that make them feel insecure. And so for, for sixes, you know, for fives, I'm just going to mention this real quick. Fives, sure. they, they go inward to protect themselves because they're afraid of everybody else pulling their energy. Sixes, they go to the group for safety. So they pull people in and mm. they have relationships and tie people in. But you also will notice with the six, um, because they have that that underlying fear, even with their friends and with their spouses, they're like, are you going to leave me? Are you breaking up? Are you leaving me right now? You know, they have that kind of tension in their relationships. So they pull you close, but then they're like, are you going to leave me? You know, it's this thing. Um, anyway, <laughs> kind of went into a weakness there. But they're overcomers because they're dealing with so much of this internal dialogue. Um, 
that they really have to overcome mountains internally to accomplish and achieve things. And so an, a healthy six and an effective six and a six that's doing things and conquering things and being productive and all of that, you have to realize that the battle that they had to overcome in their mind to get to that place is so much bigger than the battle that most people have to overcome mm. just to do those things. So they're very perseverant. Maybe it's why they stick to it and they're so loyal. Cause once they're, they get there, they're like, they did so much extra work to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So you want to talk about weaknesses? Sure. Sure. Yeah. We can both talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. So one of their basic fears is being unprotected like you talked about. Mm -hmm. So they joined the group, which you already kind of discussed. Mm -hmm. And then you talked about the phobics of being, you know, kind of being towards mm -hmm. authority. Um, they go towards an unhealthy three um, on the Enneagram diagram. And so threes tend to focus really hard on achievement and performance and putting forth this I'm amazing kind of thing for a, the sake of their own security. And so for a six that's that's healthy, they're content within themselves, they're okay being at peace, they're comfortable with the group, all of that. But when they're unhealthy, they feel like they have to strive, 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 strive for that security and for that place within the safety of the group. Hmm. Um, they can really get overcome by their anxiety when they're unhealthy. So that, that anxiety that they have to conquer, sometimes they just don't conquer it well. And that's why I said many times you have people I have people, many people in my lives that are medicated and that's important. If you need that, you, you need that for sure. Um, coming to a place where you can really calm down the tension in your mind. Um, I heard somebody say that for once, you know, they have that inner critic, that one inner voice that's really strong that says you screwed up. You didn't do that right. You're not perfect. You made a mistake. It's this one voice, but for sixes, they have hundreds of voices that come at them from different angles and different perspectives and different problems mm -hmm. and different scenarios. And so um, it's really can, can be very overwhelming for a person. And um, it's really important that you focus on your mental and your emotional health um, as a six so that you can press through and sort of ignore those fear voices in your head and really focus on truth and reality and trust. And the biggest thing for sixes is faith, to really have faith and believe in people. Um, which really talks into how to relate to sixes. Yeah. And so I think one of the keys with sixes is because they're already skeptical, they're already feeling that anxiety. You really don't want to push them and silence is their worst enemy because silence mm -hmm. allows all those different voices, internal voices, external voices to really kind of come in there yeah. and build up that fear instead of help silencing it. So you want to really begin to help them to trust themselves, mm -hmm. encourage them to trust themselves, to make yeah. a decision and really uh, push for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can be really indecisive because they're good at troubleshooting. They see all the obstacles, they see all the possible answers, and they can't choose which one to go with. You yeah. Know? And so a lot of times they need that help making a decision. And sometimes for those of us that might be on the um, impatient side of life, you know, it's sometimes it's hard for us to be patient with them and allow them to make the decision. It'd be a whole lot easier for us to say, this is what you should do and tell them what to do. And ultimately, a lot of times they're looking to you um, again, as that kind of person of authority that they trust to make those decisions for them. So to really help the six to grow in their confidence in themselves and their belief in themselves, knowing that they are safe and that they can trust themselves and that the world is safe and they can trust the world is to really give them space and encouragement to make decisions, to reinforce that yeah. their decision. That was a great decision. I'm glad that you did that, you know, offering them, Hey, what do you think about this? Even asking them for advice in your own life sometimes will just help encourage that in them that they do have great insight and can make good decisions. So basically yeah. make sure that you open room for them mm -hmm. to be able to jump in because they are great, mm -hmm. you know, strategy problem solvers, but you don't want to do it with silence. So mm -hmm. they might lead a little nudge, but not quite a push uh, right. to begin to overcome and really kind of outweigh in their mind, you know, the good versus the bad, right? So this is better than mm -hmm. this, and this is better than this. So they can mm -hmm. begin to come to those decisions. Because ultimately, yeah. six is when they're thriving and doing well. You know, they are that loyalist, they are that troubleshooter, they are that um, person. They're the backbone. Yeah, they're the backbone that's gonna bring the group together mm -hmm. and, uh, and protect them and guard them. And we need sixes in our life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and they're gifted with hospitality too. So to relate to a six, understand their hesitation 
and help them process through it. Help them, and you know, honestly, if you are six and I'm speaking to you right now, uh, you know, be encouraged that yes, there are bad things that happen in the world, but more often than not, you're gonna be okay. And if bad things do happen, and I can vouch in my own life, I've had bad things happen, um, it's gonna be okay. And I think the thing with six is, the, is their fear that something so bad will happen that it's just not gonna be okay anymore and they're not gonna be able to recover. With six is it doesn't matter what comes your way, you've got that support system around you, you've got your tribe and it's yep. gonna be okay. But if you stress about things before they've even happened, then you're losing that opportunity to really enjoy the life that you're in right now. When circumstances happen and struggles happen and you face trials, face them when they come, face them with your tribe, and you'll get through to the other side and everything's going to be okay. But let go and enjoy, enjoy your life right now, right? Right. Live your life right now. Don't let that hold you back from pursuing your dreams um, and being the best you that you can be. Yeah. So... Um, let's talk a little bit about wings and then I think we'll wrap it up. Yeah, absolutely. So you've okay. got the six with the wing five, which is going to be, I believe more of the introverted mm -hmm. type of, um, am I saying that correctly? Yeah. yeah more introverted, yeah. uh, especially like in, in small group settings. And then you have six wing seven, which is going to actually be a lot more extroverted. They can be yeah. funny. They can they be animated the people of the world. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, you're going to have your six wing fives. They like the smaller groups. They're more comfortable in their smaller groups. They're, they're more introverted. And then, yeah, just like you said, the sevens are going to be more outgoing and, um, they are the life of the party within their circle of friends. <laughs> they're not going to be friends to all the strangers of the world, right. but you know, they're the life of the party within their circle. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that's it guys. That's yeah. the Enneagram six. Make sure you subscribe yeah. that you, uh, ring the bell. yeah, ring the bell, click the bell. Yeah. And, uh, Turn on you know, if you haven't checked it out, we created an assessment tool, mm -hmm. uh, especially for you guys that'll be watching this video. It's free. It's going to be in the, um, description. The, yeah. In the description below our There's, email address too. Yeah. Our email address so that you can go straight to that. And then the reason that we created this assessment tool is number one, we wanted to offer value to you. Number two, it's an easy way. Um, to begin to figure out what you are as far as the Enneagram different mm -hmm. types. You can really go through them. Tiffany created it and um, it's actually works really, really well. So you're not gonna have to go through kind of a whole book and figure it all out. It's very short. And, and again, it's just a basic overview, but really will help you begin to identify mm -hmm. uh, who you are. And as you do that and figure out your, you know, your spouse or your partner, it's going to allow you to be able to understand mm -hmm. them better and see them from a different perspective yeah. and vice versa. Your spouse will be able to see you from a different perspective. So it really opened up our eyes onto like, you know, I can really understand Tiffany that her one tendencies and kind of begin to see them and understand maybe how she would think about something. So mm -hmm. really this assessment tool is, is priceless. And we just mm -hmm. wanted to offer value to you. And if you haven't checked mm -hmm. it out, please download it. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be a great benefit to you and the relationships yeah. around you. And it's not just about discovering your number. So once you figure out I'm a six, I, that's why I'm anxious. Okay, cool. Good to know. <laughs> and then you go on with your anxious life, like right. then you're missing the point. The idea is to figure out what your number is and then dig deep and figure out what is that childhood belief that's guiding my actions and motivations that's just not healthy and just not true. Right. And overcome that belief system, replace it with the truth. So we were saying fear is what many, many sixes are controlled by. You've got to have faith. You have to have belief in others. And so replacing those negative things with positive things is part of the growth. So the more that you research and dig into what your number is and, and yeah. those that you're in relationship with, their numbers as well, um, the healthier you'll be and the easier it will be for you to navigate through conflict. Um, and we are putting together an ebook with some more information. So once you figure out what your number is, we'll have that free download available as well so that you can dig even deeper. There's lots of resources. So it's really important that you don't just yeah. find your number and say, okay, now I know. Use that as a tool to grow. And if you have questions, you can email us at info. Yes at christianandtiffany.com. So if you have questions about the Enneagram or coaching, uh, or just you want to leave a comment in general. If you want to say hi. Yeah, send it to us. We respond within yeah. 24 to 48 hours mm -hmm. and we're here to serve you. So yeah. again, we covered number six on the Enneagrams, the little yeah. skeptic. Um, we covered the childhood belief, the stereotypes, the weaknesses, oh, strengths, weaknesses, and how to relate. That's right. <laughs> Thanks for watching you guys and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.